One of the victim slash witnesses identified me as that individual. In Obi's case, there was a key witness against him who was in his own way seriously criminally compromised. And the information about the deal that he was given was not shared with the defense as it was supposed to have been. Had that information been shared, I doubt any jury would have convicted Obi knowing that what they would have known then about the witness against him. So that was an act of prosecutorial misconduct. We have a serious issue when it comes to the system with the individuals who we have elected to be in those positions. They're not thinking about who they're harming and how they're harming that individual. It's not about just that person. I wasn't the only one affected. My family members affected. We're still going through problems because of what I was, that situation I was placed in. It's like a drowning in the water, and the individual that dives in and saves you. This one was a, a challenging case in that it required a tremendous amount of investigation. We had to completely go back and look at every single person that had never been interviewed, never talked to, who had been interviewed, uh, who hadn't been adequately interviewed. It required an investigator who was very skillful. The fact that we don't have money to to hire investigators is one of our biggest resource issues. We need investigators to work on our cases, and we need lawyers to oversee that investigation. We have you know, dozens of cases where there's investigation to be done, and we have to wait for a pro bono investigator to get to it. Now, we have some phenomenal pro bono investigators. They do great work for us, and they do it for pittance or nothing, um, So we and we rely on them. But if we could pay those same investigators to go out and do the work. They wouldn't have to wait until they had a free day. They could go out and do the work and we could make things happen faster. After 17 years in prison, 37-year-old Obi Anthony began his life in the free world with a hug and kiss from his fiance. There's really nothing to describe that feeling, and no lawyer will ever know it until they have it. And then once you have that feeling, that's really the ultimate high. You really feel humbled by the, uh, what you were able to do in a case for somebody like Obi. His was a remarkable case, and we had just a terrific experience working on that case. They brought me home, you know, and so I'm grateful. I'm ever so grateful to them. But I want to say to the Innocent Project, thank you for being the workers of the Creator. Thank you for taking up, taking up that shield, picking up the sword, going to battle and fighting for us when we didn't have nobody else to fight for us. Their efforts and their work will not go in vain. My name is Obi Anthony. At the age of 19, I was tried and convicted of a murder in which I did not commit. I realized uh, I would rather be spending my time assisting those individuals who assisted me in bringing me home. And I think that my lifetime would be better spent being able to continue to, uh, to keep the help cycle moving along. In other words, from one generation to the next to make certain that these things continue to happen for further and future generations as well. I'm kind of honored by it. At the same time, I don't feel as if OB owes us anything. We were doing what we have set out to do. It was a privilege to work on, on Obi's case. When you work on a case like that, where there's an innocent person who has kept his humanity and his pride and his dignity and his sense intact, it's, it's remarkable. I mean, you learn more from them than, and get more from that experience than you really are able to, to think that you gave back. So it, it's a, it's a wonderful thing to be able to work on these, it's an honor, it really is.